When you make a weaving, you're creating you're you're creating a space for something that is infinite and invisible to have a place in the material world. And so a weaving is in its original intention not only to clothe us to protect us as we are outside in the world it's a it's a very literal creation of a bridge that helps us keep a keep a connection like keep a connection between us and our maker not us as jews but us as human beings in jewish culture and it's, it's expressed in the ways that it's expressed so even the talit, even the, the tzitzit that holds, the talit that holds the tzitzit, every knot is, you know, you make particular prayers as you make every knot. I just thought you might um, even try to weave in a story between like what, uh, what weaving and what textiles reflect in Jewish culture and in our history and tradition and spirituality and then our work that um, we do with myself and our collective that's based in Israel, Palestine. Uh, there's this amazing story in the Talmud, I believe it is. Edel probably even knows where it is. But it's about when, when Moses and Moshe Rabbeinu finally, when he's about to die, and he like refuses to die, and the Malach HaMavet is starting to carry him to heaven. And he's like, no, I'm not ready yet. I still got a lot to do. <laughs> and, uh, More than 120 years. Yeah. And so he's refusing and he's going on this whole, this whole debate with Malach Mavit, with the angel of death, I think it is, and saying, no, no, there's still this and we didn't get to do this and I didn't get to do that. Da, 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 da. So finally, Malach Mavit like takes him layer by layer through one creation to the next heaven, to the next heaven. He's like, let me show you what you've, let me show you what you've done. Let me show you what you're doing. So every time the people of Israel pray, and come together to praise every word they speak becomes a string mm. and every string that wow. they that you, that that is created by your speaking <laughs> becomes the garments that the angels wear wow. so every time a, a, a hebrew word is spoken by our people mm. and when you come together in praise and when you come together speaking on behalf of this unification every word you speak becomes a string which the malachim are weaving into garments that they wear to keep themselves protected to protect all the people in everyone's own path and um when he saw when he saw that he was like okay said that i can go now you know <laughs> i've been fascinated with textiles and weaving for about 12 years or something like that and uh, i really wanted to learn one of the times I went back home to Israel, Palestine, I really wanted to meet the people who have been there the longest and uh, from now, like from this time and what might be, you know, which to me are, are the Bedouin people who've been nomads all over the Middle East for a long time. And so we started on this kind of wild road of me find, trying to find any Bedouin who I never had any experience with or exposure to, which I didn't even know, only women weave. So I'm an Israeli Jewish man looking for some Bedouin woman who I didn't even know about, who would even just be willing to talk to me, let alone anything else. And I was just fascinated, like how did, how, how is everything, on, how is all this relationship with weaving and the actual earth, the actual land connected? Um, and who are the people who have been in this land together with Jews, together with Israelis, together with Palestinians, together with Arabs, and all of our various ancestral narratives, like who are also the people who were still nomads, were still living um, a much more natural reflection of who we are as people connected on this earth. And um, I met an Israeli woman who ended up introducing me to a very special Bedouin woman. Um, Abu Amra. She passed away in February at like 87. And she ended up really taking me in and started to learn weaving with her. And this was about a decade ago. Uh, the original what they call Bedouin weaving. And through Bedouin weaving, I saw that actually we weave on what's called a ground loom. 
which is this loom that's made of any size. You start with a bunch of sticks and you make a weaving on it and you end with just a bunch of sticks. Mm -hmm. so this is one of the oldest forms of weaving on the planet. The scholars are arguing between that and the Mayan or Central American backstrap weaving. And they're almost exactly the same, only done a little differently. Um, and so through getting introduced to the ground loom, it's this incredible structure that's literally tied onto the ground. And, and so beyond the sort of phenomena of that, it's connected to all the people who have ancestral connections to the Middle East, no matter who you come from. And everyone can claim this weaving tradition as though it belongs to them. And at the same time, it belongs to everyone while also belonging to no one, while also belonging to um, a time before all of us. <laughs> this timeless time, so to speak, you know? This uh, Ein Sof, as we call it in Hebrew. So. Um, I started meeting other another Israeli weaver. We became dear friends and actually colleagues. And through that, we started to found a weavers collective, which is based of um, Bedouin Muslim women in the Negev, uh, myself and her, and, my, and myself and her. And about a year ago, we founded an actual legitimate collective, which we're now starting to run and manage, which is our attempt, our vision to revive the original weaving cultures of the region of the Middle East and mm -hmm. the art that is inside of this culture and try and re-inspire this different way of belonging to this land which isn't based on what um, who claims it but rather like instead of the land belonging to a particular people and raising a question of how do we belong to this place how do we belong to this land and what's so incredible about the ground loom is that it belongs to everyone and no one at the same time um, and so there's a lot of depth in that. So we started this collective, this very cross-cultural collective that we've been kind of behind the scenes working on for about a year, for about a decade. In the last year we're like, okay, let's really make something of this. Weaving is a, at its heart, at its core, weaving is actually a reflection of an entire cultural way of living. Um, and it's not just something that you wear, it's not just something that you use, it is that, but it's also a reflection of everything that comes behind it. So our in our collective, we do our, everything completely by hand. There's no machines. The, we use the loom and we use a drop spindle to spin the yarn. We're growing the plants to have the natural dyes come back, which are all uh, like plants that have become extinct. That used so um, we made this little clip, so I thought to show you guys. But it just shows you a little bit of a visual of the story of what we do and why we're doing it. And. Um, yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> Salam alaikum, shalom, and welcome to the Ghazala Collective. We are a cross-cultural collective of Bedouin Muslim and Jewish Israeli artisans made of weavers, spinners, dyers, shepherds, and farmers. We return to the lands of our ancestors, to the Aravai in the Negev Desert, where Sarai and Abraham once walked. And there we found a nearly lost tradition as well as our own sense of home. So we formed Razala, a multi-regional network committed to reviving the weaving cultures of the Middle Eastern nomadic round loom. Through our work, we connect beyond political barriers to encourage a culture that nourishes the land, the plants, the animals, and the people. We honor these traditions by adhering to an ecologically sustainable, fully handmade process, which gives the majority of profit from each commissioned textile directly to the weavers. The weaving then takes place in both Bedouin and Jewish homes. Our wool is sourced from the beloved sheep and camels of four Bedouin clans in Arad. These precious fibers are spun in the homes of Bedouin in the Negev and dyed in the Arava. We are moving toward using only natural dye plants that are now being grown in a Jewish organic farming community beside the Red Sea. We weave to express the desert's ineffable nature, the soul's yearning for connection, and the resilience that unites us all. We invite you to collaborate with us and make your story a part of ours. Return to simplicity, remember the importance of natural beauty, and contribute to reviving these ancient ancestral traditions. Connect with us online to learn more about how Rizala 
can weave something new for you, your family, or your community, and we can create something beautiful together.